Welcome everyone to UI5Con 2024. My name is Janina and this afternoon here I'm your moderator in the Audimax. Also a warm welcome to our online audience because we are streaming live. Also this room here is recorded and it's the only one that is live streamed. So you have the option here to also have uh, more rooms and more expert corners meeting people online. We have the live stream. We have the comment section, so if you have questions, you can post it there and I can bring it uh, on stage and ask it uh, to the expert. Uh, it's 3.30 and you're here for the talk, get your projects ready for UI5 2.x using UI5 Linter. And we have invited um, Javor Ivanov and Thorsten Hochreuter. Um, Javor is a software developer from SAP Labs Bulgaria and mainly involved in SAP UI5 framework development. And he's already here on stage with me. Uh, Thorsten Hochreuter is a software engineer at SAP UI5 core team, currently in the audience. Um, but he will join in in the second half. But for now, let's welcome Javor. Thank you. Are you tired? So. Maybe you would like to stay because there's some awesome stuff that uh, we are going to present with uh, Torsten. And today we're going to tell you how to migrate your projects, to, to prepare your projects for UI5 2.0 with the help of the UI5 linter. And we'll show you a bit more of the evolution of the core. But before we start, I wanted to make things clear and to tell you what the UI5 linter is not. So <laughs> the UI5 linter won't replace your current static code analysis tools. It won't replace pre prettier ESLint or whatever tool you're already using. Actually, it will work alongside with them. It will complete them. And <clears throat> basically, what's the difference? So. The normal linters, they are usually linting your projects file by file. And the UI5 linter actually has a context for your application. And we'll talk about this a bit later in details. But for what's the agenda for today? Well, the UI5 linter, obviously. And what are its features, what, are, what it can detect, and eventually what we foresee for the future of the linter. And then we'll quickly migrate a demo app. Actually, Matthias showed you earlier in the uh, keynote uh, just a sneak peek, but we'll go into the details there. And then Torsten, he'll show you uh, the core evolution. But <clears throat> before we start, so currently there are maybe 70 libraries maintained by over uh, 400 developers into the UI5 world. Uh, I mean, internally in UI5. And there are many, many, many internal applications as well as many, let's put it, external applications, application you guys built, awesome applications. And we were wondering, how can you, we help you? How can we enforce you to uh, help your applications be, uh, adopt the best practices, the UI5 best practices? And furthermore, how to prepare your projects easily for uh, UI5 2.0. And yeah, you know it already. The answer is UI5 linter. Actually, <coughs> this is a tool designed to easily, seamlessly migrate your projects to UI5 2.0. It will give you suggestions on how to migrate easily. And additionally, it will provide you context and information about the findings. But what about the linter? Actually, we started this project maybe a year ago, maybe less. And it started from a POC. And it <coughs> quickly evolved into something productive. And we uh, realized that it can be easily adopted. And it steps on the TypeScript compiler. It, it's the way how it collects information about your project. Additionally, we feed it with UI5 information. So that's how it knows about your project as well as uh, UI5. And this mixture uh, helps you and enforces you to de develop in the best way 
uh, the UI5 application. But the good news are yet to come. So this project is already on GitHub. You can go and grab it. I saw you already that you do that, but I need to mention it. So you have an idea or something to tell us, go there and write it, or you can meet us at the booth later. Of course, you can use it in your project already because it's available as an NPM module and you can easily uh, start working with it and check your project. But what it can detect? What findings can, can it have? So basically, what type of analysis we do? Uh, the main purpose for uh, the linter was to check JavaScript code. So of course, <coughs> it checks it. It finds whether you're using deprecated libraries, whether you're using deprecated code, as well as something we call partial deprecations. For example, if you have a control and inside this control you have a deprecated property, we can detect this in the definition and it just uh, shows you on the screen. Uh, we uh, analyze XML views and partials the way we do with JavaScript code. Actually, behind the scenes, we transpile the XML views into a valid JavaScript code and the flow is the same as the JavaScript. But we can go deeper. We can detect uh, CSP issues. So for example, if you want your project to be CSP compliant, we can detect this. And for example, we can find that you have an inline JavaScript within your HTML files. Of course, the core of UI5 and the UI5 tooling, the manifest JSON and the UI5 YAML, we also analyze those files and detect whether you have, you have used deprecated libraries. Of course, other tools would notify you about this, but yeah, you have it in one place. And now the trickiest part, the component analysis. A component is not just a single file. It's many other things and we need to have the knowledge of your uh, program, of your application, your project, in order to analyze, for example, whether your component is set to run in async mode. We'll see this in action later. But what's on our roadmap? So allow UI5 version configuration. What this means? Currently, your application is being analyzed as it's built with the latest UI5 stable version, which is 120. And we want, this works like for almost all of the cases, but we wanted to make it, uh, make it fine tuned and to be able to analyze it with the correct version of your UI5 application. So this is yet to come. Uh, the next thing is, uh, yeah, UI5 linter will work along with your uh, static code check tools, but maybe we can, in the future, we can integrate it in a plugin and plug it into ESLint. Uh, here is the discussion on GitHub, so go on and uh, check it out. And of course, uh, the TypeScript support. Your, many of your applications are already written in TypeScript, and the core of the UI5 linter is uh, the TypeScript compiler then why don't we enable the support of TypeScript? Actually, currently, you can analyze TypeScript, but it's under experimental flag, so we uh, plan to do this uh, official. Of course, uh, the UI5 linter is already integrated with some tools, and these are the Fiori tools and the VS Code. So if you have a Fiori Elements application and you're using Fiori tools for that, just jump to the dashboard Fiori dashboard and you will see this uh, you run UI5 linter and check your project. Of course, <coughs> for convenience, you already saw that in the keynote, but the UI5 uh, linter is integrated into also into uh, VS Code. Uh, it enables you to click on the findings and it will uh, directly navigate you to the issue so can, you can easily fix it. And now, the demo. All right. So we have this sample application that is running with uh, UI5 118. It's 
uh, to do application, simple to do application, but let's see if it's, uh, it has some findings. So you already saw that the UI5 linter is run with this command. And after a while, you will get the findings. All right. So we have, uh, you see, we have the YAML files, also the component JS, uh, app controller JS, manifest JSON, and also the XML views. Let's start with the easy ones. Obviously, uh, we have used uh, the SAP UI commons, which, which is deprecated long time ago. I don't see any findings anywhere else. This means that most likely I have cleaned up my code but forgotten to remove them from my manifest and from UI5. Okay, I'll just click on those findings and it will directly navigate me to the, uh, to the places in the code where I can safely delete them. All right, so I have them, I'm removing. Then, um, all right, let's jump for um, app view. Okay, import of deprecated module sub f avatar. Um, what should I do? Okay, it's deprecated, but how could I know what to do? Well, we have covered you. If you, um, you have two options, you can go, of course, to the documentation and read about sub f avatar, but we have this built in, so if you provide these flag details, it will bring all the findings with a detailed section which shows since when this uh, has been deprecated as well as eventually some uh, guidelines what to do or at least you will be, uh, you have a link directly to the uh, SAP UI 5 demo kit. So in this case we have used the SAP M avatar. It's simple as that, okay? We have the uh, the sub M namespace is default namespace, so I'll just need to remove the flag. And now, here we go. We have uh, migrated our code for, uh, for the XML view. Then, uh, here it is, the component JS. Component root view is not configured to load its views asynchronously. Okay, what does that mean? This does not mean that you need to either provide uh, special interface, this uh, interface sub UI core async creation, or uh, to provide it uh, async flag in the manifest. Let's do this on both places. We need to be sure that our app is loading asynchronously. Let's do this. Uh, All right, oh, I will open our manifest and we will also add the flag. All right, let's run again and see what happens. Uh, all right, I have maybe mistaken here the interface keyword. Ah, ah all right, it's, it's in here, sorry. So. You see that we cover you even in this case. So we have now the interface uh, implemented in the component JS as well as the flag, but it's unnecessary. So you either have to choose and I choose to delete the async flag so everything runs smoothly. Uh, okay, let's run it again. Okay, I have only findings now in the app controller. So we have this, uh, what does this mean, SAP UI core bar, bar color? This means that uh, it's an enumeration that is defined into the library, into the core library, but we use it as a module. It's possible currently, but it's not the best practice. You would, need, you would need to import the library itself and to reuse it as a variable from there. So I will just replace the bar color and then I will reuse it as its property from there. Then we have, as we thought, uh, talked already, 
we have a global variable we use the jQuery and I see on the next row that we have a call to deprecated function uh, control okay I can click it it's this, you can see that the current is directly to that position so we have two issues and we can easily solve it uh, in a single row so basically I can do this uh, All right, now it actually takes the DOM element and then extracts the control from it, but we have an API for that, so we use it. Then, uh, because I have deleted a row, I would e either need to uh, generate again the lint thing, because uh, otherwise, okay. So I have this tab. The tab is replaced with a press, an easy change, all right, and then uh, we go to the core. So uh, we have currently three findings in a single row. We have that we are using the subglobal variable. Uh, we use a deprecated function called get core, and we use a deprecated function called by ID. So we can easily replace this. You see, we, in the end, we need to get the, this list item uh, control. So we can do this by this by ID and to provide only its ID. So let's see if we have any findings further. All right, so our code is clear. Let's see if we can use UI5 2.0. Uh, Peter already mentioned in his keynote that we have uh, nightly build of uh, 2.0 snapshot so we can try to use it. It's uh, just to mention it's available since December 2023 and that's how we validate. So if we go here and just use UI5 use uh, snapshot. All right, and you see this project is using OpenUI 5 version 2.0 snapshot, and let's see if it's running. All right, we have successfully run the project, but let's like, check it out. So you see, it's perfectly active and it's working. So we have migrated successfully our application to UI 5 2.0. It was simple as that. So, now Torsten will tell us more about the evolution of the core. Hi. Thanks. All right. So, uh, now we come to hopefully the not too boring part because now we get into a bit of theory. So, what Jabo showed you was essentially how to migrate a 1.x application to a 2.x standard. And a lot of those APIs that he showed previously and after the linter found the issues, he migrated them to modern APIs. Those APIs were deprecated. And what I've prepared here in this little picture is a bit technically what we did. So on the left side, you see this huge monolithic block that was previously called the core. And the core is essentially one giant god class that does everything. There's a lot of APIs in there, a lot of dependency, it's, it's really big. So what we did, um, we essentially put an X to it, we chopped it down into smaller parts, that's what we call the modular core. There are just now a couple of more APIs, a couple of more modules, but they're all smaller, they're self-contained, they don't contain as many dependencies, they're just more lightweight. A couple of examples here, this is not an fully complete list this is just the bare minimum that we think is, uh, is interesting for you. It's the component element theming lib, which is our library loader. And yeah, so instead of um, boring you with, uh, with slides, I'd like to quickly go to the, uh, where's the mouse cursor? Uh, there it is. So when I 
Is it open? Uh, no. Oh no, you have to switch the screen. So what I want to show you is uh, essentially our documentation. So what Yavo showed you is um, is the linter. It's a it's a tool that helps you uh, find the issues, find the deprecated APIs. It already gives you hints and pointers and links into the demo kit. But what you can see here, can you uh, make this a bit bigger for? Sure? So what you can see here is probably your reference guide. This is the documentation that you can look up uh, if you want to know what API the core provided previously and what it doesn't provide in 2.x. It doesn't mean the features are gone. They are still there. However, they have been migrated. A lot of the APIs, for example, the element by ID that we've seen earlier, that is a drop-in replacement. So there is an old API, sap.ui.getCore by ID, and the correct one-to-one -one replacement would be on the element class to call get element by ID. Now, one thing, if you can scroll down a bit to the init library, because there's an interesting thing I just caught a glimpse of in the presentation that Peter did a couple of uh, minutes before here when he talked about the design spaces, design systems. Um, the, the init library call that I've caught in, in his slides, um, that is a deprecated call, right? It's, it's using the sap.get core in a library and it's initializing a library. So as an example here on the right side, you see the sample code, how that would look like. There's a dedicated library loader now. So there's a module called libjs and on that libjs you have an init library or rather an init function that you would use instead. Again, this is a drop-in replacement. You can use the, get rid of the old API that uses globals and that has all these big dependency lists and you can then just migrate over to the small lightweight library init API just as an example. This list is complete. It's very long. Um, as you can see, if you could scroll down, there's a, there's a tiny scroll bar. It gets smaller. But um, it doesn't make sense to go into all of those things. The linter will show you the findings, and that's where you can find out what, uh, what's the correct replacement. So now to the next part, which is also part of the modular core. Uh, oops. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's the side. All right. So what I just told you was the core itself, which was a huge giant God class. That is also true for the configuration. So anyone who has ever worked with a UI5 application knows that there is something called configuration JS, and typically you would retrieve it by sap.ui.getcore.getconfiguration. And then again, you have this huge collection of APIs that are all over the place. It's a, it's a huge, as I said, monolithic God class that was grown over 10 years and yeah, it contained pretty much everything that somehow configures the framework or even smaller parts of the framework. So what again, what we did here, we unpacked all of that. And as you can see, there's a bit of an overlap to what I've shown you with the core. There's now a dedicated set of feature modules, right? The configuration in 2.0, but also in the 1.x code line available, is unpacked into multiple modules that are self-contained with a certain feature scope. So everything that relates to formatting is in this module called formatting. And everything that relates to localization, like i18n stuff, for example, setting a language, retrieving a locale or a language tag, etc., that is all in, a, in this module called localization. And the same is true for things like theming, control behavior, security, and so on. There's a bit longer list. And now, finally, we can look at the documentation here. Again, all of those things are deprecated APIs that the linter will bring up. But if you want to know how to replace them in a bit more detail than what the linter can show you, that's, that's the reference page. I would say 90% of those things you see here are drop-in replacements. So typically, for example, the, let's have a look at uh, may maybe take set language or get language if you could search for that. Yeah. So what I told you earlier, there was a function called set language, and that implies a couple of dependencies to language handling. Now, it is still compatible in 1.0 on the configuration passat, but in the, in the 2.x code line, it will only be available on the localization module. So if you want to change the language at runtime or retrieve the language tag or whatever at runtime, localization is now the new endpoint where you can find this. And all of those feature facade modules, they have a much smaller scope. So you would only require what you need. Um, essentially, this is, again, a complete list. Like, the list is very long. There was 10 years of API on this one monolithic facade called the configuration. And, well, you have to look up what you need. I would say most of the things are really easy drop-in replacements, but occasionally there are things that 
have been scrapped without replacement. Right? There are some APIs that are so old that are essentially sunsetted like maybe five, six years ago, and then there is no replacement. But if there is no replacement, there's at least a guideline in here on how to migrate to other alternatives or maybe modern APIs or a certain combination of other APIs. Well, obviously, we could fill hours with that stuff. I'm not going to bore you with that. If you have questions about this, I'm here at the venue. We can, we can talk about this. I'm happily go into much more detail, but uh, for time's sake, I think we have to leave it here. Um, yeah, so this is essentially the, the part that the framework provides for you. Obviously, if you look at control libraries or controls itself, there's a long list of deprecated APIs that a control or a library provides, and then you would have to look, look that up at the respective documentation there. But for the core and the configuration, which is like the essential painful monolithic block that the framework had to, had to deal with for, for years or nearly a decade, that has been cleaned up. Um, yeah, I hope it's much simpler and much easier to use, and uh, Linter will find all the problems you have. Yeah, I think that's that's my part for this. So use the Linter. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Sure. Do we have a microphone on? We have a question uh, from the online audience. Mark S. has a question. So he asks, when will we see live linting like with regular ESLint without the need to manually run UI5 lint? Well. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, can you hear me? I think maybe your microphone is off, but mine is on. So do we need, ah, OK. I'll, I'll catch that. I'll try. <laughs> well, to be honest, all right. All right. No, so is it on? Yeah. Maybe. I think it's on. But yes. I can also jump in. Yeah. So yeah. the product on it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, th that's basically what uh, Java mentioned uh, on the roadmap to have a better integration into ESLint. So if you read that discussion, um, the link he posted in our GitHub project, um, you will likely get an understanding of why we currently don't have the ESLint integration because it might be possible with some workarounds like other um, integrations also do, but um, for us it, it wasn't really possible in a good way so that it also is fast enough that you can do it while working in the code. Um, but we definitely want to have a um, deeper look into this again and hopefully um, be able to um, yeah, provide a good integration in that direction as well. So we can't promise anything, but we, uh, this is also very important to us. Yeah. And maybe some uh, detail to mention um, in the demo, um, which is the usage of the 2.0 version with the UI5 CLI. So what you saw, saw was um, the internal uh, preview of that functionality, but if you want to use as an external the OpenR5 snapshot from version 2, you can only do that with the CDN. So you just change the bootstrap URL in your HTML file, and then you can also test that um, with the preview version of OpenR5. Thanks. Thank you. Do we have another question from the audience? Now or never? Oh, here. Can you? Yeah. Oh. Not well, bad. well done. <laughs> Thank Not you. Bad. So I have one question. Do you also plan to implement some auto fixes like we have, for example, in ASLint, like renaming things or events properties, or for example, this component async flag? Um, we are also looking into that, but right now the main focus is on detecting all kinds of things. And then also one next step would be obviously to have auto fixes, but um, we right now really focus on um, yeah, be able to detect as many things as possible because some are very complex and also very hard to find um, by just looking through the code. So right now that's our main focus here. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So um, one question about the compatibility with 2.0. So uh, in the demo that you showed, um, you had to like physically execute the app and then click on to see if 
you know, everything works with 2.0, right? Is there a better way to do that? Or say, you know, like you did the linting, is there a way to check if everything from 1.x runs on 2.x as well? Yeah, so the linter is uh, the tool we hope can detect most of those things you have to address and um, yeah, like apply the best practice. Um, but we can't uh, detect everything because some things are too dynamic, so uh, it's just not possible um, in a static analysis. So the other step that is important if you want to then prepare your project would be to have a good coverage uh, of your unit tests and also end-to-end -end, uh, integration tests. Um, to run them also then on the, right now on the OpenAI 5 preview version, to really make sure that every functionality works as expected. expected. So those two parts are essential here, yeah. Yeah, okay. maybe, maybe I can add, is my microphone on? I think so. Yeah. Maybe I can add something from framework perspective, so these guys are the tooling colleagues. I, I maintain the runtime, Johannes over here. Also did a lot of stuff for the configuration part. The API said, I talked about they're already available in 2.x. So if you use them there, they will be unchanged in behavior in 2.0, right? So whatever works on a 2.x code line, whatever you change there, whatever the linter brings up and you adapt already, that will be stable in 2.0. The behavior doesn't change. And 99% of what I talked about is actually just migrated to a better place in a, in a more cohesive scope. So the the biggest pitfall, if at all, would be if you have to migrate from a synchronous to an asynchronous API, because that's something that obviously changes in behavior. And synchronous component creation, for example, won't be available in 2.0 anymore. So, however, if you if you fixed that already in your 2.x code line uh, applications, then it will be stable in 2.0. In the yeah. yeah. Uh, I also have a small question. Uh, I saw that get core is deprecated. Does this mean it will be removed with 2.0? Uh, because I saw it's only deprecated since 1.118 or something. And I, I saw it often be used in uh, yeah. recent applications. So yeah. so get core is, is, was one of the main global functions that was available in UI5 since forever, but that won't be available in 2.0 anymore because there will, no glo will be no global getter to retrieve the single core instance because, as I said, all the API has been moved to a smaller dedicated place. So you cannot get this one god class anymore in 2.x. However, there is a core class that is available, but the feature that this new core will provide in 2.0 is like tiny. Like There will be maybe one function. One important function, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but yeah. We, we can talk later if you like. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So looking at the time, uh, let's call it a talk. So give a round of applause. <laughs> Javo, I have you on the schedule for the expert corner. You're already three minutes late, by the way. So it starts <laughs> at four. If you have questions, um, the guys will still be around. Um, we now have uh, about 12 minutes um, of break. And we are back with Katrin Polacek, which I already see over there. Yes, she's uh, already um, yeah, ready for a talk, and Klaus Keller. Um, so at 4.15, uh, we have on stage adding AI to SAP Fury Elements apps at both design time and runtime. And yes, I said AI, so be back um, at 4.15 for the next talk. Thank you.